الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه نعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبد الله ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين وصل على محمد في الآخرين اللهم وضع عن الصحابة أجمعين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر صحابة النبي ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله brother, brothers and sisters and sisters here الحمد لله Husband. I can hear after that I'm speaking the specific things. <laughs> Brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا It's been Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala share his ibadah with looking after the parents. And subhanallah, when I once spoke with brother, and the Imam, I was told them about my story with coronavirus. Last year, subhanAllah, I was in Masjid on the end of March. I was doing live video to the families. But subhanAllah, and somehow I think I met someone who had COVID-19. Then subhanAllah, I thought it's just normal because I was fit and subhanAllah, just young. Then I say, inshallah, it should be fine. But subhanAllah, after two weeks, I feel like still there's something in my body. And subhanAllah then stays after months. Then subhanAllah, while I'm suffering from this illness, subhanAllah, which is something that's new to your body, then you remember subhanAllah, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, وَإِنْ تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تَحْصُوهَا then I say, what's the best thing to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then I remember, I say, if I will do sadaqah for this king, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help me. Then I remember, I say, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the parents. Then I spoke with my dad. I say, dad, I am in England, and this is what happened to me. They say to me, did you go to hospital? I said, yes, I visited the hospital a lot of times, but there is no answer, subhanAllah. Which is totally something very weird. You go to the hospital, you check everything, everything is fine. But your body still, you have pain everywhere, headache, like, uh, dizziness. SubhanAllah, you cannot leave the bed. And SubhanAllah, they even stop me from fasting, and doing tarawih last year. It was a very good like, exam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this age subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then I remember something. I said when I traveled to England to study, my dad, he wasn't happy with this decision. Mm -hmm. Then I phoned him again. I said, Dad, can I ask you a question? He said, yes. Then I said, he wasn't agreed when I traveled to study in England because because he said this, like for example, because he didn't know too much about England, there's massages, because he is just normally traveled to Saudi, to Umrah and come back. And then, subhanAllah, when I came to England, when I went to massages, then he changed his mind, subhanAllah. He said, oh, there is massages, inshallah. He said, I'm going to masjid, there is, Indian community here, the Pakistani community here, Arabic community here. SubhanAllah, then he changed, but I remember that the decision he wasn't happy with from the beginning. Then I asked him when I was sick, very sick. SubhanAllah, I was a bit bummed, I could not even move. Then I said, Dad, can I ask you a question? You wasn't happy with my decision. He said, oh son, just forget now you are ill, just think about your health. I said, no, I need you to say that you are giving me the, the rukhsati, as Indian people say. 
just give me the permission that you are not, for example, sad about my decision when I didn't listen to you. He said, yes, that time, yes. I said, yes, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in exam. <laughs> then he said, look, son, I will tell you a small story, and there is dua, you should do it every day. He said, there is a man in a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam time. He was uh, in his, I think, uh, way from Mecca to Medina. And the thieves stopped him in the road. And subhanAllah, uh, he was doing, uh, he asked the thief, he said, okay, now you will kill me and you will take all my money or everything. Just leave me to pray to Allah. He said, you can't pray to Allah. Then when he prayed the two rakah, he said, in the sujood, he said, Ya wadud, Ya wadud, Ya dal arshi majid, Ya fa'al lima yurid, Ya man mala'a nurahu arkana arshihi, Ya mughithu aghithni. He said this dua in the sajda, then subhanallah, he saw the man head in front of him. And somehow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent someone to help this person from this dua. They said to me, my son, if you need me to be happy, this is exam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just do this dua. Then I kept doing this dua while I'm trying even to pray, I cannot pray subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the other thing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, was ta'inu bis sabri was salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, was ta'inu bis sabr, sabr, station, and salah. SubhanAllah, before Ramadan coming, I was so much patient, but SubhanAllah, the body is not giving me any chance to move, to go to Salah, to pray. And when I spoke with doctors about this condition, they say, look, this condition is something very weird. It's happened with a lot of patients after some dizziness sometimes. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, you have a chronic illness, sometimes fatigue everywhere. Then I said, what's the, what's the cure for this? He said, there's no cure. Only cure if you try to remind, reset your mind. Then I said, SubhanAllah, Ramadan is coming in three weeks. Then one of my brothers from India, he gave me a medicine. He said, Shaykh, try this medicine. And inshallah in Ramadan, let's see inshallah what happens. I remember the night before Ramadan, how I was, how I traveled from Liverpool with my friend to Birmingham to the place where the masjid was there. He said to me, you cannot even walk. How you will go and pray in masjid? And the guy, his name is Hussein, yesterday was with me. I said to him, look Hussein, the doctor said you should reset your mind. I will just go to masjid. He said, okay, try the first day two rakah, then inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you, like for example, a strength slowly, slowly. Then subhanAllah, something happened with the siyam, the fasting. I start the first day fasting from two years now, which is first year, last year. I didn't fast last year because of, of the illness, because my body is so much dry and subhanAllah, something very weird. I start the first day is from Ramadan to fast. SubhanAllah, it looked like my body is turned on the first day of Ramadan. When I went to Masjid, uh, I remember I saw brothers in Masjid, they say, Shaykh, uh, we already bring two Imam to support you in Masjid. Uh, try to come like for even one day a week or something, because they know I was a bit bounded. And I say to them, no, I'm coming tomorrow for Isha and eight rakah. Eight rakah? How you will do this? SubhanAllah, there is something when I remember was ta'inu bis sabri was salah. I said, I should go and pray. Then SubhanAllah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me a chance to continue, then that's it, SubhanAllah. This is Ramadan. I will not forget. I will not leave this Ramadan as well. SubhanAllah, I fast the first day. As I said to you, my body turned on. Then I went to masjid. I prayed Isha, eight rakah, then subhanAllah, next day I forgot even I was ill. Then the brothers from Islam prayed, they phoned me, they said, Shaykh, will you go? I said, yes, I'm going, inshallah. It's me, subhanAllah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran, the, the secret in the Quran, 
If you just open, subhanAllah, some people they say, no, the, you can't go to the doctor, the doctor can't tell you something. Well, I'm telling you, for one year, I used to go to doctors. Spoke with my friends, they are doctors as well. Spoke with doctors from everywhere in the world. No doctor gave me any one answer. The answer was in Quran. And this is my personal experience, subhanAllah. The conclusion, subhanAllah, sometimes we don't believe, like for example, when we open the Quran, we don't feel. Because we don't need this thing right now. Well, subhanAllah, if you, if you take the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like for example, the health, that's why Ibn Umar says in hadith, عن صحته يسأل عن صحته وعن مرضه عن صحته It means the, the, the health is it's very big gift to you when, you when you lose this gift then subhanAllah you will open the Quran you will try to find anything to help you but subhanAllah I'm telling you every ayah you read in Quran you should stop two or three times and you will know you will know that everything in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember, I will end with this story. I think uh, there is a big scientist, he's from, from UK, I think. He was the, the, the top man who was saying there is no God in the world. And he, uh, he made a book, and he called the book, There is no God. I think his name is Anthony Flew. You go to Google, Google it, you will find it. Anthony Flew. And then, subhanAllah, he spent his life in about 25 to 26 years. After that, he wrote another book. He called it, There is, and he believed no, a God. He said, when we go, like for example, deep in the human body, Subhanallah, especially like for example when you go deep in the body, there is something it will never happen without the God Subhanallah. That's why when, when I went to the doctors, what I never been to the doctors before COVID. But for this experience, the one year experience, the doctors they only can sometimes give you kind of help. But most of the help comes from Allah subhanahu wa I met, like for example, a lot of patients, especially in this time, and I saw a lot of videos about the patients sometimes, how they deal with the illness. Most of them, subhanAllah, and when I say to myself, when I spoke with my coach, there is coach for every like chronic illness. They speak with you, they ask you how you like for them deal with your illness. And when when he said to me, I need you to have a regular thing to do every year. Every day, sorry. I said, yes, we pray five times a day. <laughs> so if there is a little thing, we do it every day. He said, yes, this is will reset your brain. I said, subhanAllah, what else? He said, you should try to read anything, like for example, a newspaper. I said, no, we have Quran to read every day. As well. <laughs> he said, you should move, try to move every day. I said, yes, I'm going to do the whole five times a day. And subhanAllah, that was the cure for me, subhanAllah. So if you just do the five times salah, this is subhanAllah, helping your body every day and you don't know subhanAllah. Mm -hmm. And if someone <laughs> suffer from this, this illness, especially if you read about it, it's called chronic fatigue syndrome. It's very subhanAllah, very weird illness. You feel subhanAllah, sometimes you, you see in dreams, subhanAllah. But, when I focus in the Quran, subhanahu alhamdulillah, subhanahu ta'ala granted me with, like for example, memorized Quran while, while I was a child. It's me, now I know the benefit when my dad put me with Murabbi. There is Murabbi, we call him, he looked like a teacher, but he's not like the teacher now in Masjid, no. My dad used to bring Murabbi to the house. The Murabbi is, look like in the Khulafa time. Uh, when they go, for example, for Ghazwa or for, like, for example, going with the army, they left their sons and daughters with Murabbi. My dad did say to me, that in that time I said, why my dad always put me with this man, I need to go and play. But well, SubhanAllah, after this experience of years, Alhamdulillah, I said, this is a gift which is I cannot appreciate in my life, SubhanAllah. Jazakumullah khairan, Allah so happy to be 
especially this Ramadan with, with a community like you, the illness, subhanAllah, what we are facing now in our community as a Muslim community is not easy. But alhamdulillah, when we see the faces now in Masajid again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you two ajr now. The ajr of sabr, and inshallah anything will happen to anyone inshallah in Masjid Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will write the ajr. But be careful as well. Try to, for example, follow the social distance, <laughs> wear mask, but I already got COVID. It's mean, the COVID now is afraid from me. That's why, yeah, I had enough from COVID. I, I remember one day I was in the hospital, but subhanAllah, with me, uh, it's something looked like uh, just exam from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when I did all the tests, was negative. But subhanAllah, there's something happening in my body. That's why I always called my mom when I spoke with her. I said, she said to me, please, if you go outside, try to wear a mask. I said, even COVID now, he know me very well. <laughs> Maybe he will see me, will go away. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair. I'm so happy, Allah, to be with this community. And Jazakumullah khair. I really appreciate that, for example, you are hosting the Imams and hosting the Musawwis in this masjid. Be generous in Ramadan. Try to do sadaqah. Try to read Quran as much as you can. Wallah, one day, when you, like, for example, become in bed, and I remember this thing, Wallah, when you are in bed, and you only think, I need anything to help me, to support me, then you need to spend the whole money you have just to have, like, for two breathing for one day, and you can't, Allah. Sometimes you say, oh Allah, I need just to go to masjid today, but you can't. I mean, Wallah, you are in a big nirmah. If you just walk to masjid and come back, if you are just sitting with your family, this is a big nirmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in Quran, وَإِنْ تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا You cannot account what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you in your life. But when you lose anything, you remember straight away. You will say, Allah, I will spend the whole money I have I will just have one day, like for example, of rest, one day of ibadah, one day of, like for example, <coughs> happiness with my children. Jazakallah. I think I took a lot of time. Yes, the dua will be short then. <laughs> Jazakallah. My name is Isa, I'm from Kuwait. And I'm happy to be with you all of you, inshallah. Please send salam to our sisters at home and ask them to do dua for us, inshallah. Jazakallah.